Hey, hey developers, today I'm gonna show you how you can create a full stack application using Nux3 with server routes without having to create your own backend application. So we're gonna deep dive into all the intricacies of Nux3 server routes, how you can create queries, params, how we can create posts, gets, how we can create dynamic routes, and it's just really super straightforward, so make sure you stay all the way to the end. Hey, and if you like this video, make sure you click that thumbs up, share it with other friends and family, that'd be awesome. Let's jump into the video. To get started with server routes inside Nux3, I have a VS Code app open here with a brand new fresh Nux3 app. And then I also have a hello world here. So I just changed it to say hello world. So let's take a look at creating some server routes. So the first thing we need to do is on the right hand side here where all our configuration is, is we'll go ahead and create a new folder. So there's a special folder inside Nux3. It's called uh, the server slash API folder. And this will hold all your APIs that are gonna be run on the server side, not the client side. So the most basic example of that is we'll create one called hello.ts. So this is a TypeScript file. And so this means anytime we hit this uh, API hello route, it, this will run. And what we'll do is we'll just create uh, something called define event handler. And we'll have an event that comes out of it. And then this event is kind of like your normal event you would see if you're using Express or any other backend server language. So if I hit event dot here, you see I have a context, event, a request, and response. So it makes it really simple there. But we don't really need to manipulate the event in this simple example. All we're going to do is just return a JSON object, which has API, and I'll put works here. And this is all you really need to do to be able to return JSON data from your server route here. So to check to see if this works, I can do this a couple of ways. First, I'm just gonna go into the browser and go to slash API slash hello and try to bring that up. And you can see here it didn't work. So usually what I have to do is as soon as I start this the first time, I have to stop the server, restart it. There we go, you can see now it works. So make sure you stop and restart the server anytime you do this. So now in the API hello route. Now in the main route, I wanna show it in my main route here instead of having to always like bring it up through API slash uh, hello like this. So to do that, I'm gonna go back to my app view and inside my script setup here, uh, I'm gonna create just a really basic app. I'm gonna import ref from view and I'm going to use this special use fetch function which is built into next three and the nice thing about it unlike fetch it, it infers the data types that are coming back it also helps um, so you don't have to have as many steps it has some nice utilities to it so it always returns this data object and then inside that will have the data that we need I'm just going to call it API so I'm going to await use fetch and I'm just gonna go to the slash API slash hello. And then I'm just going to take this information and I'm gonna wrap it in my ref. Maybe not 100% necessary, but that's fine. And then right underneath my hello world, I'm just going to show my info. So if I did this right and I refresh, you can see, cool, now it's contacted the API, it's returned back the information. Obviously, if I just wanted what was inside API, I could do something like this, and it just says it works, which is perfect. Now, there's a couple of other things you can do here that I wanna show you. If you want to grab like data from query params, or if you want to grab data from, uh, you're doing a post request instead. So let, let me show you first if we were using query params. So, Right now, if we go to slash API slash hello, and you put, I don't know, a question mark, param one equals ABCD, and we hit enter, nothing really does anything differently, but we can capture that. So there's a nice helper that will help us do this. So I can go const query, use query. You don't have to import any of the stuff in, by the way, if you noticed. And now this query has that data in it. So maybe I can, I can even want to return it maybe. So I'm going to I don't know, create something called REC, and I'm gonna do query, and then the name of the query param. So we know it's param one. 
And if we did this right and we refresh it, cool, you can see you have A, B, C, D. So it actually took whatever this is and passed it in. Let's say if we do Eric, now we have Eric in here. And so you can grab this data from the, on this, on this page as well if we needed to. So inside this app view, let's go back and just return all of it in just the JSON. If we refresh it here, uh, you can see it only shows API works, but if you want to do a query, we can just put in this question mark and then param1 equals Eric. And if I refresh it, you can see here, now I have this Eric as well. Cool, so we've been able to change this use fetch. Now, what happens if we wanted to send something over as a post? There's actually a helper for post as well. So if we go back, if we go back here to this, to here, we have something called use body. So I'm gonna do const body equals use body, and then we're gonna pass the event in there as well. And let's just show the body too. So I'm gonna put B for body and I'm just gonna show the body that's sent over. Maybe something like that. Now, if I refresh this, uh, we just have this empty array because now we don't, we're not sending anything back. This, this body is empty. But let's say we actually change this use fetch over to, to using a post instead. So it looks really similar to Axios or just using fetch. So we just create another object here. And inside that object, we put in the method, which this time it'll be post. And then we'll change the body that we're gonna send over. So we'll just send over test uh, one, two, three. So now this is going to send the same use fetch with this query parameter, but as a post instead with this test. So if we did this correctly, we should see something next time we refresh. Oh, and we have one bug here. You have to actually await this use body. Otherwise it doesn't work. And we have to make this an async function. So we do that. Refresh, cool. Now we see test one, two, three out of it. So we're able to easily grab the query data and the post body data using these helpers, which makes things uh, much easier. Let's take a look at a, a couple of other handy server routes that you may need to use using Nux3 that are pretty handy. First, there's the middleware. So once again, this card requires no configuration other than creating the folders. So inside the server folder, we'll create a new folder. We'll call it middleware, and it has to be named middleware, just like it's the same thing. We have to create the name server, has to be server, and API has to be API. And then inside here, let's create a logging function. So I'm gonna create one called log.ts. And inside this function, all I wanted to do is to log all events. And so I'm gonna put event here, and this is gonna console log I don't know, as new request, and then that'll be plus, and then event.rec.url. And by the way, sometimes you'll notice this, like IntelliSense doesn't know what you mean by define event handler, even though you spelt it right and it looks right. Anytime this happens, I just do the control shift P and I'll reload the window real quickly. And usually when it reloads, TypeScript will reload. There's also a way you can reload TypeScript as well. Uh, and that sometimes helps. So if you ever lose types, then that's a good idea to do. So now we have a new define event handler in here. And what a middleware does, it essentially sits between every server request that you do. So it kind of intercepts those server requests that you can do things with it. So a common example of a server, server middleware is you might do an API protection. So you maybe have protected routes. So every time you go to a certain API, you have the server middleware that runs that will protect it. And you can use a Nuxt traditional server middleware, but um, we're not gonna get that into this segment. We're just gonna look at just the normal event handlers that you can run at every single event, a server event that happens. Sometimes I have to stop and restart the server after adding a new route like this for server middleware. But if we did this right, we should see in our console down here some information. Cool, so you're already seeing it, new rec. So every time we like refresh this page and we come back to this page, we'll see that it's running the requests again and it'll show right here. 
So that's pretty handy uh, that we know that we can do that. Another uh, nice, kind of a nice utility that you can use is you can use dynamic server routes. So I'm gonna create a new API here. We're not gonna play around with the middleware anymore. I'm gonna create a new folder called book. And then inside the book, I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna put info.ts. And what this does, and we'll just export for default define event handler. And then inside here, we'll have an event which will return something called hello. And then we'll put in this event.context.params.info. And this could also be shortened to just doing this as well. Okay, so this should run anytime we have this dynamic route in the books folder. So if we did this right, let's take a look. We might have to restart the server, but we'll try API slash book slash hello. Oops, it's supposed to be book. There it is, hello, hello. So if I put hello, Eric, in the URL, it says hello, Eric. So now we have this catch all route. Well, this route that looks at this params info, assuming this right after the book, this is the params and then you can use this inside your app everywhere. Uh, there is also a default handler, which is really similar, where you can, instead of having this info here, you put just three dots. And this is a, like a catch-all for anything that's uh, sent over. And then instead of having this, we could just do default hello here. It's very similar, just and this just says hello, but if you put in, I don't know, any route here, it all catches it the same, uh, very similar. This is just kind of a default handler, very similar to the params one we just created. And lastly, I wanna show you, if you wanted for this book, I wanted to just allow only get requests. I can create a new file here. I'm gonna call it test.get.ts. And then once again, we'll define event find event handler. And then from here, we'll have test get handler. And so this will only run on get requests. So if I do this and I have test as the name here, so here's my get handler. But if I try to do a post for this, this wouldn't work. This would only run on gets. And you can name it test.post, test.delete, and that would be specific for that type of request. So that's a lot we covered today. I hope you guys got a little bit more familiar with the server routes. It's pretty powerful. You can do a lot of things with it. If you guys have made it all the way to the end of this video, take a look in the description. I have a link to, uh, if you ever need help on coding, I have a link to my one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentoring. You can check that out. Thanks, take care.